Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell. I'm the author of USMLE Step 2 Secrets, and this is part one of the acid base and electrolytes chapter. Question one, how do you analyze arterial blood gas values? Remember three basic points. One, the pH tells you whether you are dealing with acidosis or alkalosis as a primary event. The body will compensate as much as it can as a secondary event. Two, look at the carbon dioxide value. If it is high, the patient either has respiratory acidosis with a pH of less than 7.4 or is comp compensating for metabolic alkalosis with a pH of greater than 7.4. If the carbon dioxide is low, the patient either has respiratory alkalosis with a pH of greater than 7.4 or is compensating for a metabolic acidosis with a pH of less than 7.4. And three, look at the bicarbonate value. If it is high, the patient either has metabolic alkalosis with a pH of greater than 7.4 or is compensating for respiratory acidosis with a pH of less than 7.4. If the bicarbonate is low, the patient either has metabolic acidosis with a pH of le less than 7.4 or is compensating for a respiratory alkalosis with a pH of greater than 7.4. True or false, the body does not compensate beyond a normal pH. True. For example, a patient with metabolic acidosis will eliminate carbon dioxide to help restore a normal pH. However, if respiratory alkalosis is a compensatory mechanism and not a rare, separate, primary disturbance, then the pH will not correct to greater than 7.4 overcorrection does not occur. List the common causes of acidosis. Respiratory acidosis can result from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, drugs, chest wall problems such as paralysis and pain, or sleep apnea. The drugs that can lead to a respiratory acidosis include opioids, benzodiazepines, barbiturates, alcohol, and other respiratory depressants. The other type of acidosis is metabolic acidosis, which can result from ethanol, diabetic ketoacidosis, uremia, lactic acidosis from sepsis, shock, or bowel ischemia, methanol or ethylene glycol, aspirin or salicylate overdose, diarrhea, and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. List the common causes of alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis can result from anxiety and hyperventilation, as well as aspirin or salicylate overdose. Metabolic alkalosis can result from diuretics, except the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, vomiting, volume contraction, antacid abuse or milk alkali syndrome, and hyperaldosteronism. What type of acid-base disturbance does aspirin overdose cause? It results in a respiratory alkalosis and metabolic acidosis, which are two different primary disturbances. Look for coexisting tinnitus, hypoglycemia, vomiting, and a history of swallowing several pills. Alkalinization of the urine with bicarbonate speeds excretion. What happens to the blood gas of patients with chronic lung conditions? In certain people with chronic lung conditions, especially those with sleep apnea, pH may be alkaline during the day because they breathe better when awake. In addition, just after an episode of bronchitis or other respiratory disorder, the metabolic alkalosis that usually compensates for respiratory acidosis is no longer a com compensatory mechanism and becomes the primary disturbance with an elevated pH and bicarbonate. As a side note, remember that sleep apnea, like other chronic lung diseases, can cause right-sided heart failure. Should you give bicarbonate to a patient with acidosis? For the purposes of the step two board exam, almost never. First try intravenous fluids and correction of the underlying disorder. If all other measures fail and the pH remains less than 7.0, bicarbonate may be given. The blood gas of a patient with asthma has changed from alkalotic to normal and the patient seems to be sleeping. Is the patient ready to go home? For step two purposes, this scenario means that the patient is probably crashing. Remember that pH is initially high in patients with asthma because they are eliminating carbon dioxide. If the patient becomes tired and does not breathe properly, carbon dioxide will begin to rise and pH will begin to normalize. Eventually, the patient becomes acidotic and requires emergency intubation. 
if appropriate measures are not taken. If this scenario is mentioned on the boards, the appropriate response is to prepare for possible elective intubation and to continue aggressive me medical treatment with beta-2 agonists, steroids, and oxygen. Fatigue secondary to work of breathing is an indication for intubation. Asthmatic patients are supposed to be slightly alkalotic during an asthma attack. If they are not, you should wonder why. List the signs and symptoms of hyponatremia. Lethargy, seizures, mental status changes or confusion, cramps, anorexia, and coma. How do you determine the cause of hyponatremia? The first step in determining the cause is to look at the volume status. If the patient is hypovolemic, think of dehydration, diuretics, diabetes, Addison disease, or hypoaldosteronism, in which case you'll see a high potassium. If the patient is euvolemic, think of SIADH, psychogenic polydipsia, or oxytocin use. If the patient is hypervolemic, think of heart failure, nephrotic syndrome, cirrhosis, toxemia, or renal failure. How is hyponatremia treated? For hypovolemic hyponatremia, the treatment is normal saline. Euvolemic and hypervolemic hyponatremia are treated with water and fluid restriction. Diuretics may be needed for hypervolemic hyponatremia. What medication is used to treat the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, SIADH, if water restriction fails? Demeclocycline, which induces nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. What happens if hyponatremia is collect, corrected too quickly? Overly quick correction may cause brainstem damage, so-called central pontine myelinolysis. Hypertonic saline is used only when a patient has seizures from severe hyponatremia, and even then, only briefly and cautiously. Normal saline is a better choice 99% of the time for board purposes. In chronic severe symptomatic hyponatremia, the rate of correction should not exceed 0.5 to 1 milliequivalent per liter per hour of sodium. What causes spurious or false hyponatremia? Hyperglycemia can do it. Once glucose is greater than 200 milligrams per deciliter, the sodium value decreases by 1.6 milliequivalents per liter for each rise in 100 milligrams per deciliter in the glucose. Make sure you know how to make this correction. Other causes of false hyponatremia include hyperproteinemia and hyperlipidemia. In these instances, the laboratory value is low, but the total body sodium is normal. Do not give the patient extra salt or saline. What causes hyponatremia in postoperative patients? The most common cause is a combination of pain and narcotics causing SIADH with overaggressive administration of IV fluids. A rare cause that you may see, may see on the USMLE is adrenal insufficiency. In this instance, potassium is high and the blood pressure is low. What is the classic cause of hyponatremia in pregnant patients about to deliver? Oxytocin, which has an antidiuretic hormone-like effect. What are the signs and symptoms of hypernatremia? Basically, the same as the signs and symptoms of hyponatremia. Mental status changes or confusion, seizures, hyperreflexia, and coma. What causes hypernatremia? The most common cause is dehydration, or free water loss, caused by inadequate fluid intake relative to bodily needs. Watch for diuretics, diabetes insipidus, diarrhea, and renal disease, as well as iatrogenic causes, such as administration of too much hypertonic IV fluid. Sickle cell disease, which may lead to renal damage and isosthenuria, which is the inability to concentrate urine, is a rare cause of hypernatremia as are hypokalemia and hypercalcemia, which also impair the kidney's concentrating ability. How is hypernatremia treated? Treatment involves water replacement, but the patient is often severely dehydrated. Therefore, normal saline is used most frequently. Once the patient is hemodynamically stable, he or she is often switched to half-normal saline. 5% dextrose in water should not be used for hypernatremia. 
What are the signs and symptoms of hypokalemia? Hypokalemia causes muscular weakness, which can lead to paralysis and ven ventilatory failure. When smooth muscles also are effective, patients may develop ileus and or hypotension. However, the best known and most tested effect of hypokalemia is on the heart. EKG findings include loss of T-wave or T-wave flattening, the presence of U-waves, premature ventricular and atrial complexes, and ventricular and atrial tachyarrhythmias. What is the effect of pH on serum potassium? Changes in pH cause changes in serum, serum potassium as a result of cellular shift. Alkalosis causes hypokalemia, whereas acidosis causes hyperkalemia. For this reason, bicarbonate is given to severely hyperkalemic patients. If the pH is deranged, normalization most likely will correct the potassium derangement automatically without the need to give or restrict potassium. Describe the interaction between digoxin and potassium. The heart is particularly sensitive to hypokalemia in patients taking digoxin. Potassium levels should be monitored carefully in all patients taking digoxin if they are also taking diuretics, which is a common occurrence. How should potassium be replaced? Like all electrolyte abnormalities, hypokalemia should be corrected slowly. Oral replacement is preferred, but if the potassium must be given intravenously for severe derangement, do not give more than 20 milli equivalents per hour. Put the patient on an EKG monitor when giving IV potassium because potential fatal arrhythmias may develop. That's the end of part one of the acid, base, and electrolytes chapter. Please join us for part two of the same chapter.